Come on, lift your voice. Come on. San Bernardino, y'all ready for revival? Listen, I know San Bernardino, y'all are louder and louder than now. Are y'all ready for revival? Come on. How many want to disrupt the plans of the devil in this region? Well, friend, I'm here to tell you tonight that God is ready to disrupt our lives. You can see you can never disrupt the plans of the devil until God disrupts your very own life. You're like, I don't like this guy. It's okay. You'll, you'll love me in a sec, I promise. You know, I was in worship, and uh, I have a whole message. Maybe I'll get to it. <laughs> and I felt this quickening in my spirit that there's moments in time in history where God is doing something significant and special in a region. But here's the deal. God asked for one simple thing, faith. And I believe tonight, many people say, Ross, you're a revivalist. I'm like, amen. You know what I say back to that? So are you. And I'm in a room tonight where I really believe, I'm not just saying this to be cute. I don't say things to be cute. That's not how I was raised. I believe I'm in a room full of revivalists. Those who are going to destroy darkness, devil, and the death here in San Bernardino here in California, here in America, to the nations of the earth. Listen, I want you to stay standing for a sec. I'm a very intense guy. I'm going to try to smile from time to time tonight, I promise. I just get fired up because we're living on the hinge of history in America. As we're in worship, I said, Lord, I, I want to I do a few things tonight. And I felt the Lord impress on my heart. First, I want you to start with some prophetic vision. Number two, I want you to share a little bit of your story. Because have, you have you ever met somebody that walks into your house and eats your food and you're like, bro, who are you? I don't want to do that tonight, okay? I want you to know who I am. And number three, I want to just release what I believe the Lord is saying in 2024, specifically over San Bernardino. Y'all cool with that? So here's the first thing I heard the Lord say. Just stay standing for a sec. I promise you'll be able to sit maybe in like 30 minutes. It's okay. You can laugh. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. So if you don't have joy, you probably don't have a ton of strength. Amen? And here's what I heard the Lord say. If you have your Bible, just open it real quick. I want you to go with me to 2 Kings chapter 6. Just listen to this. If we can keep the keys for a sec, that would be great. You're amazing, by the way. 2 Kings chapter 13, I'm just going to read a few verses here. This wasn't on the notes, sorry team. I'll we'll get to the notes in a sec. <laughs> 2 Kings 13 verses 14, starting verse 14, just listen to this for a sec. It says, when Elisha, who was a prophet at the time, was in his last illness, the king of Israel visited him and wept over him. My father, my father, I see the chariots of Israel, he cried. Basically he's saying we're in trouble. Elisha told him, get a bow and some arrows, and the king did as he was told. Elisha told him, put your hand on the bow, and Elisha laid his hands down on the king's hands. Then he commanded, open that eastern window, and he opened it. Now listen here. Then he said, shoot. So he shot an arrow. Elisha, Elisha proclaimed, this is the Lord's arrow, an arrow of victory over your enemies, and you will conquer them all. Verse 18. Then he said, now pick up the other arrows and strike them against the ground. So the king picked them up and struck the ground three times. But the man of God was angry with him. You should have struck the ground five or six times, he exclaimed. Then you would have beaten your enemies until they were completely destroyed. Now you will only be victorious only three times. Ross, what in the world does that have to do with tonight? San Bernardino, we have begun to strike the ground. Y'all have begun to strike the ground. This church has begun to strike the ground. But I'm here to tell you tonight that we must continue to strike the ground until we see the fullness of victory in this land. I heard the Lord so strongly say, Ross, we're in a significant moment in this region. I'm not here to cause fear, but I believe we have a moment that we must partner with God. That there is something rising up on the inside of those who live in this region saying, God, it's now or never. 
It's revival or bust. It's God, your word is true or I'm going back to nothing. I want to encourage you tonight. Would you begin with a posture in your heart saying, God, I believe. Get past the apathy. Get past the heartbreak. Get past the disappointment. Those are real things. But who is the generation that's going to say, God, that did hurt. God, that person did do me wrong. But guess what, God? I want you more than anything else. So here's what we're going to do. I don't know about you, but I know for me, I did not come here for a normal Wednesday night service to sing some cute karaoke Christian songs and to clap it up and have a good pat on my back. No, no, no. I'm here for the power and presence of Jesus to sweep this room and to sweep this city. Psalm 100 says we enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And so here's what we're going to do. Just lift your hands right now. We're going to begin to thank the Lord for all he's done in our lives. So I just want you right now, don't wait on me, 20 seconds, just begin thanking God. God, we say thank you for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for providing for me. God, thank you for everything you've given me. Thank you for taking me out of darkness and placing me in the kingdom of light. God, I thank you for the blood of your son that forgave me. I thank you for the cross. I thank you for the resurrection. Come on, you're going to press in right now. God, we say thank you tonight that you are the God who answers and hears from heaven, that you're not just seated on a throne, but your ear is open to hear your people. And we say tonight, God, you found a people in San Bernardino, California, who are hungry for your presence. Come on, now let's go into praise. We enter the gates, now let's enter the courts. God, we praise you right now. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice. Jesus, we praise you. You are holy, God. You are holy, God. We thank you for your presence, God. We invite you into this place, Jesus. We want you above everything else. Come on, 10 seconds. 10 more seconds. Just praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. We love you, Jesus. You're beautiful, God. You are the one thing we want, Jesus. We pray these things in Jesus' name. You can take a seat. Y'all okay? By the way, I walk around a lot. I just get too fired up. I can't stay in one place. I'm sorry, camera guys. I, I, I'm sorry. I apologize ahead of time. Man, thank you, Lord. Well, many of you guys saw we had this amazing event coming up uh, this Saturday. I want to encourage you guys to come out. You know, I know we, we have a lot of events and a lot of things going on, but here's the question I always like to ask. What if a city is saved in a day? What if your family member is saved in that day? What if your mom, your brother, your cousin, your aunt encounters Jesus for the first time? What if your family or your friend actually sees breakthrough and gets free of that addiction once and for all? And I'm not saying it only happens through California will be saved, but here's what I am saying. Everywhere we've traveled, we've seen God do miraculous works, and guess what? He's not finished yet. And so I just want to encourage you, bring a friend, bring a family member. This is a great opportunity to invite somebody that would never come to a church. We actually have somebody on our team that saw a post on social media, came to our gathering, got saved, baptized in one night, and now serves on our team full time. So you never know what the power of an invitation can do for a human life. Tonight, I also want to share a little bit of my story. I get really fired up, so I have to stay on track, otherwise we'll be here for three hours. <laughs> I like you. Whoever you're at, you're going to be here in the building for the next couple hours with me. So I just want to start with my story, and then I'll share a little bit of a word. Uh, just to be super transparent tonight, my story starts on day one. I was born by artificial insemination. Uh, I grew up in a lesbian household with two moms. I was born in, the, in Los Angeles. You know, I had never gone to church my whole life. I had never heard a worship song. I mean, I, I never heard a sermon like, zero grid for God, you're looking at him. <laughs> and I remember I was 15 years old, and my friend says, hey, do you want to come to church? And I'm like, sure, I'll go. And I'm sitting all the way in the back row. And by the way, God loves the people in the back row. He's going to get you tonight, I promise. <laughs> it's all right. I love you too. And so I remember I'm sitting in that back row, and my friend says, hey, Ross, did you like the service? And I said, listen, I don't know what just happened in that building, but here's what I do know. I felt good. Amen. <laughs> and so I went home that night, and, you know, when you first encounter Jesus, how many know when you first encounter him, it's not like you've ever had a conversation with God? 
right? Like I had never had a dialogue with God before. And now as I look back, that was about 13 years ago, as I look back on it, really what was happening in my heart is I was saying, God, please don't let me be a good person who reads a good book, who goes to a good church. God, I have to know you. I want to experience your power in my life. I don't want it to just be some head knowledge but a heart revelation. I want to actually experience your presence. If what that preacher is saying is real, do it in my life, God. Do it in my family, God. Do it in my heart, God. Do it in my city. And sure enough, the presence of God would meet me in my room night after night. And I remember the next time I went to church, I raised my hand. I said, Jesus, here's my life. You know, another reason why I'm so excited and honored to be here tonight is I actually got saved at a church in Fontana. Yeah, come on. My family, we actually lived in Duarte. Anybody know where Duarte's at? Come on, that's where I grew up at. And my family moved to Pomona for a few years. Then we moved to Colton. And then now my mom actually lives in Ontario. Come on, somebody. And so San Bernardino is not just like another pit stop for me. Like this region, I truly care because if God touches this region, he touches my mom. If God saves a family in this region, he'll save my family. If God can do it in here, why can't he do it in my house, in my home? And so tonight, I hope you hear my heart. I truly am so honored to be here. I thank you, Pastor Christian. Pastor Marco didn't get a chance to meet him yet, but I'm so honored to be here. And so let me get back into the story. I get saved at 15. And I graduate, call, or I graduate high school, I go to college, and I went to college in San Diego because I was pursuing baseball at the time, and I just want to be so honest and transparent tonight. You know, I graduate college, and then I had to pay this thing called rent. <laughs> Anybody ever heard of rent before? Yeah, it'll wake you up real quick. You're like, wait a minute, I can't just, like, go to college anymore. I got to, like, do something with my life. Okay. And so I remember, I'm like, okay, I got to be a man. I got to make money. I got to figure this thing out called life. And long story short, what happened is I played the blame game with God. God, I don't have the money I want. I don't have the car I want. I don't have the girlfriend I want. And the list goes on and on. And so I said, God, you know what? I know you're awesome, but I'm going to put you to the side, and I'm going to figure out my life. Best decision ever, right? And so sure enough, from 2016 to 2019, I lived my life however Ross wanted to live it. And you know what's interesting is I did everything the world told me to do, but yet when I laid my head on the pillow at night, I was empty. I had the comforts and the pleasures of this world, but the comfort and the pleasure of my soul was never satisfied. There was what I like to call that God void inside of me that was longing for my father. And I tried filling it with everything that every person told me to do. And so sure enough, 2020 comes. Y'all remember 2020? Like, Ross, please don't go there. I don't want to remember it. No, 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 no. I want us to remember it because I don't want it to happen again. And you see, the church might not have been prepared in 2020, but best believe we're prepared from here on out. And so 2020 comes, and I got this amazing job opportunity. You know what my first thought was? I'm about to live my life. <laughs> I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to travel. I'm going to go where I want. Whatever I want to do, I'm going to do. And then March 2020 came. <laughs> and I remember sitting there. And I'm looking at Instagram, and I'm like, people are about to die over an Instagram post. What is going on here? It was crazy. Y'all remember how crazy it was in California? And so I said, God, or actually, before I get to that, in that moment, I remember as I'm watching all this happening, I'm not walking with God, the Holy Spirit speaks to me. And he says, Ross, if you don't stand now, you never will. Now listen, I love the Father heart of God. I love Abba. Amen. But this was not a daddy God type of moment. This was a stern father looking at his son saying, Ross, you have a decision to make right now that will not only impact tonight, but it will impact the rest of your life. And in that moment, I remember getting on my knees, weeping, like many of us have had this moment, saying, God, here's my life. Whatever you want to do, use me. I like to call that the most dangerous prayer on the planet. Because that will shift everything in your life. And long story short, as soon as I did that, the spirit of revival hit my life. And what happened is, as I repented, I turned away from all my sin. I said, God, here I am. And you know what's so interesting is when the spirit of revival hits your life, it'll take you from the neighborhood to the nations. Come on. The spirit of revival, you might be here in this neighborhood, but I promise you, God wants to take you to the nations. 
And so as soon as I said yes to God, long story short, I went to this tent revival service and I met Joel. Y'all remember Joel who was up here worshiping? He was singing worship. I didn't know who he was. God said, you need to connect with him. I said, God, should I like take him out on an in and out date first? Like, what do I do here? Like, it's a little weird if I just walk up to this random guy. I'm like, hey, God told me to like, you know, I, don't, I didn't know what to do. Long story short, I went up to him. I'm like, bro, this is going to sound weird, but I just feel like we're supposed to connect. Do you want to be my friend? <laughs> It's actually not a bad opening convo, guys. Try that one next time. Anyways, and so I remember Joel and I, we start texting, and we figured out that we both had this burning desire for California. And as I started to dig in more to the history of California, I was talking to the youth earlier, I said, in just the last 100 years alone, there's been four massive moves of God here in California. Here in California, Azusa Street, Amy Simple McPherson, the Jesus People Movement, Billy Graham birthed his ministry here. And so here's what I like to say. The ground under our feet is a land of revival. There is DNA of revival in the Golden State. And what God did once, he's going to do it again. And he's just looking for a people that will partner with him. And you're like, Ross, are you going to ever get in the Bible? I promise we will get in the Bible in a sec. I love the Bible. We're going to get there in a sec. I promise. And so sure enough, Joel and I start traveling. And uh, we said, you know what? What in the world should we do? The, the state's in chaos. What do we do? We're like, we should probably do what the Bible says. It's probably a good idea. <laughs> so we showed up at Huntington Beach. How many know where Huntington Beach is at? Come on, we show up in 2021, and we did not have a social media Instagram. I had never preached a day in my life. They're like, who's going to preach the gospel? I'm like, me? <laughs> right? We show up there, and 300 people show up. I'm like, yo, like, who are you? I'm like going up to people. I'm like, are you real? Like, I'm tapping them and shaking their hands. And, and people are literally coming off of the boardwalk getting delivered and getting saved in Huntington Beach. And you know, people came up to me, they're like, Ross, how long have you been a pastor? I'm like, 30 minutes. <laughs> Ross, what church is this? I'm like, bro, I literally just started going back to church, <laughs> right? But sure enough, the move of God was on and we're like, we gotta, we gotta give this a name. And so we decided to name it California Will Be Saved. Believing that wherever California goes, America will go. And where America goes, the nations of the earth will go. And so for the last three years, I've had the privilege of traveling California full-time, preaching the gospel, baptisms. I mean, we're bringing horse troughs out to the middle of the streets. I mean, it's crazy, y'all. Just a horse trough dunking people, getting them, up, getting them up out of there. It's incredible. And so I actually wanted to show some pictures. I believe the team has some pictures. We got those, Christian? I hope so. Praise God. <laughs> but if you guys get those pictures, that'd be awesome. Uh, some of the pictures we're going to pop up here in a sec is, number one, in July of 2023, last year, we shut down Hollywood Boulevard. Come on. Guys, listen, we did two events in Los Angeles, and then our team was like, hey, we should do something else in L.A. I'm like, listen, if we're going to do a third event in four weeks, we got to go big or go home. And I was kind of joking. I was like, hey, maybe we should shut down Hollywood Boulevard. While I was laughing, God wasn't. <laughs> and so long story short, we show up at Hollywood Boulevard, in July of last year, in 2,000 people showed up on Hollywood Boulevard. The police department said it was the first time in all of the history of Hollywood that a Christian organization shut down Hollywood Boulevard for the gospel. Come on, can we praise God? Come on, praise God. There it is. Come on. Can you go to the next picture real quick? We have one more picture of Hollywood, if you have that one. But if you don't, it's all good. There it is right there. Awesome. So as you can see, literally for blocks, it was just people. We had 118 documented salvations and 38 baptisms that night alone. It was incredible. Can you go to the next picture for Huntington Beach? Uh, the next month after Hollywood, we went to Huntington Beach and close to 4,000 people showed up. Come on. Man, can you show the last picture? I think there's one more in there. Awesome. I mean, guys, this is just the body of Christ coming together. And why do I share these pictures? Thank you so much, team. You're awesome. Thank you. I show these pictures not so you're just like, man, Ross, California will be saved. You guys are so awesome. We're so grateful. We love the support. We can't do it without you guys. But I'm here to tell you, you're a part of this. I'm here to tell you that it's not just the Ross and Joel show. It's the body of Christ in California coming together for such a time as this, saying, God, we will strike the ground with worship, with the gospel, with baptism, believing now is the time in California. And so I just want to stir your faith tonight. Are you guys feeling stirred tonight? 
Here's what I want you to do. Open your Bible with me and please go to Mark chapter 16. It's the last chapter in the book of Mark. Many of you are familiar with this scripture. And I want to give one more piece of context before we dive in. You know, sometimes in revival or charismatic circles, which I'm in and I love, we always want something new or fresh. But here's the reality. Jesus is everything we need. Jesus is the greatest revivalist known to mankind. If we don't have Jesus, I don't want it. If revival comes at the expense of intimacy with God, I don't want it. If revival comes at the expense of the body of Christ or the local church, I don't want it. I want Jesus to become the lover of my life and everything else flows out of it from that place. You see, here's the truth. Until I see Jesus rightly, I won't see people rightly. And if I don't see people rightly, I might have revival in me, but it won't flow out of me. And for too long, the church has had encounters in the building, but they don't know what to do outside the building. That's shifting in 2024. Revival is not just taking place within the church. Friend, we are the church as soon as we leave this building. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to begin to lay our hands on the sick. We're going to begin to open our mouth and preach the gospel. We're going to baptize people in our pools, in our living rooms. We're going to make disciples not just in the building, but outside the building. Are you with me? Like, Ross, that sounds amazing. Teach me the word. Awesome. I'm glad you said that. Mark 16, verse 15, this is what we call the Great Commission. And this is one of the final things Jesus said before he left this earth. He said, and then he told them, talking to all his disciples, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved, but anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. These miraculous signs will accompany those who speak on a mic. No, that's not what it says. These miraculous signs will follow only the pastor. No, that's not what it says. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name. They will speak in new languages. They will be able to handle snakes with safety, and if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick, and they will be healed. Do you call yourself a believer? Perfect, you just signed up for the Great Commission. If you believe in Jesus and call yourself a born again Christian, all those things the Bible said are for you. So that means as you leave this building tonight, you can do all those things that the scriptures say. And here's the deal, I was asking God, okay, it's the Great Commission, probably every person in this room has heard this. What are you saying, God? And he said there's four keys to revival in this city. Number one, preach the gospel. Now here's the deal, when you preach the gospel, you're not preaching a cute Christian message. The Bible says it is the power of God in Romans 1 to save all who would believe. Friend, you and I carry the greatest story in all of mankind. You and I have the greatest message to share with the earth. You know, sometimes we get so caught up in just being a Christian, coming to church, reading the Bible, keep doing those things, amen. But did you know you're a carrier of God? God lives in you, and friend, he wants to flow out of you. One of those ways he does that is through the proclamation of the gospel. So you're, you might be saying, okay, Ross, that sounds awesome. Everywhere I've gone, I've felt the Lord share with me, share the real gospel. This is the real gospel. God creates Adam and Eve. We all know this story, right? Just buckle up. It's going to get good, I promise. He creates Adam and Eve. In Genesis, it says that man and God walk together in the garden. This is crazy. The fullness of God and the fullness of man, like you and I, walk together. I don't know about you, but that's insane to me. But then here's what happens. Adam and Eve sin, and as soon as they sin, there's now a separation between God and man. Why? Not because God hates you. No, no, no. It's because he's holy. He cannot have a relationship with somebody that is not holy like himself. I'm going to fast forward. Yeah, you can clap that up. Come on. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to fast forward through thousands of years here. And basically what happens is the Israelites, the chosen people of God, they try their best to get to God. But they can't do it, right, because we're only man. And so what happens is God sends his son Jesus. Now here's the deal about Jesus. Was he fully God? Absolutely. But he was fully God and fully man. The Bible says he was tempted and tested at every point like you and I. Why does that matter? You see, many people have a fear of God, a reverence of God, but they don't understand he's just like you. That Jesus, when he came to this earth, had a real flesh and body. 
He felt real pain, real emotion, real trauma. He felt loneliness. Everything that you and I have gone through, Jesus has actually felt. You see, the reason why this matters is because if you don't know that, you'll live your life in reverence to God, but you'll never come into intimacy because you don't think he understands you. You see, in order to preach the gospel with clarity and power, you have to know the man you're preaching about. You see, I see many people, come on, come on. Yeah, we're going somewhere. I see many people preach the gospel, and I'm like clapping it up. I'm like, man, I'm so glad you're doing that. But sometimes the reason why I don't think they see fruit is because they're sharing a message, not a man. You see, a message goes in one ear and leaves the other. But a man, when you meet him face to face, eye to eye, you can never forget it. And so I'm calling for the church, you and I, to not just preach a message, but to know the man and preach the man. Are you with me? So Jesus goes to the cross, and I always love sharing this, real nails went through his hands, guys. Real blood came out of his body. Isaiah says he was beaten beyond recognition. That means if Jesus was standing next to you, you wouldn't be able to recognize him. Think about that for a sec. The death of Jesus was not like a bad day. It was an excruciating, painful death. Beaten, whipped, mocked, and left alone. Hung on a cross so that everybody could see him walking by. And you know why Jesus did that? Because he loves you. Jesus did that because he knew that by dying on that cross, he would become the perfect sacrifice to forgive you and I for all our, all our sin and all the mistakes in our life. Thank you, God. But friend, the story does not end there. And on the third day, this man named Jesus rose from the dead, conquering sin and death once and for all, that no devil, no demonic spirit can ever have authority over him or conquer him again. This man, Jesus, did what no other person could do. And so, friend, when you preach that gospel, understand you're not preaching, like I said, a cute Christian message. But you're preaching the only power on the earth that can set free a human soul. The only man that can save somebody and transfer them from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Amen? All right, point number two in Mark 16. After it says preach the gospel, it says what? It says anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved. Go with me to Romans chapter 6 real quick. Just get there with me real quick. You see, baptism, once again, is not just a cute Christian dunking in some water. It's not what it is. Romans 6, I'm going to read a few verses. Just check this out. Well then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his grace? Of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Did you know that you can actually be free of sin? Or have you forgotten that when you were joined with Christ in baptism, you joined him in his death? For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we may also live new lives. Since we have been united with him in his death, we will be raised to life as he was. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ, so here it is again, so that sin might lose its power in our lives. Verse 7, for when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. When you go under that water, you're joining the death of Jesus Christ. And when you come up out of that water, you're being raised to new life. Why does this matter? When you baptize somebody, they're getting set free in that bathtub. They're getting set free in that pool. They're getting set free in that baptismal. And here's the deal. I love churches do baptisms. Amen. If you preach the gospel and somebody gets saved, ask them on the spot. Have you ever been baptized before? And if they say no, guess what? You're baptizing them. Now here's the deal, we don't like this because it puts responsibility on us. <laughs> Friend, if you don't baptize them, they might not ever come back. If you don't take that responsibility, they might not never step foot in a church. If you don't actually say, God, I'm not sure what to do, but I trust you more than my unbelief, God help me, watch what God will do. And so I wanna encourage you, baptisms are a key in the end time revival. And there's so much more I can dive into, but we'll have to do that another time, I'll be back, amen. <laughs> All right, Mark 16, I want to read the last few verses here. The final few points that the Lord showed me. So after we see, preach the gospel, we see baptisms, 
Then it says, these miraculous signs will accompany those who what? Believe. And you're a believer, so this is for you. Bounce with me to Acts chapter 9. Just go with me real quick. This story, uh, verse 32, this story has always resonated in my spirit, and I believe this is actually potentially possible because it's in the Bible. Amen. Meanwhile, Peter traveled from place to place, and he came down to visit the believers in the town of Lydda. There he met a man named Ananias who had been paralyzed and bedridden for eight years. Peter said to him, Ananias, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and roll up your sleeping mat. And he was healed instantly. Now listen to this, verse 35. Then, anytime you see the word then or but in the Bible, you should really pay attention. Then the whole population of the city saw Ananias walking around and they turned to the Lord. Could it be, San Bernardino, that that person we're walking by who's sick or has disease, that if they would be healed, the whole, the whole city would turn back to Jesus? Could we be one miracle, one healing, one salvation away from it all being flipped around in a moment? This is not Ross's opinion. This is not the charismatic translation of the Bible. This is the word of God saying one person got healed and an entire city came back to God. This should not only make you clap, this should make you go, you know what? I'm going to start laying my hands on the sick. I'm going to start casting out devils. Someone says they're sick at work, I'm laying my hand right there. Somebody says mom's not feeling good, I'm not picking up Tylenol, I'm laying my hands on her right there on the spot. This has to go from a head knowledge to a heart revelation. This has to go where we say, Jesus, the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead lives in me, is in these hands, therefore be healed in Jesus' name. Are you guys tracking with me tonight? I'm not yelling at you, I'm a part of this with you. I'm just like you. The Bible says in 1 John chapter three, greater is the spirit in us than the spirit of the world. So therefore, I don't care how sick somebody is, I don't care what the doctor's note says, I don't care if they have three days left to live, when our hand touches them and we proclaim the name above all other names, sickness, death, disease, and the devil has to bow in that moment, in that moment. Come on, shout to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And guess what? Amen, I like you, whoever you are. <laughs> Not only can you do this in your everyday life. Actually, let me say it like this. Saturday is a perfect opportunity for you to do this. There will probably be, probably be hundreds of people who don't know Jesus there. There will probably be some people who maybe they are Christians, maybe they're not, and they have sickness or disease in their body, and God is saying, guess what? Ross isn't going to do that. <laughs> the person on stage can't touch every single person. He's saying, hey, son, hey, daughter, you're in it. Tag team, go. Church, the power of God is not a cute Christian buzzword. It is active and alive today. And if you call yourself a believer in Jesus, then it's time for our lives to not just be a Christian confession, but we live like the devil. Did you hear that? No more Christian confessions, but our life looks like the devil. We will lay our hands on the sick, and they will recover. Last thing I want to say here. Go with me, Mark 16, one more time. <clears throat> Just want to read this real quick. Thank you, Lord. Mark 16. Actually, sorry, Matthew 28. This is the other version of the Great Commission. Matthew 28, the last chapter in the book of Matthew. It's the Great Commission, but in a little bit of a different language. It says, I have been given all authority. This is Jesus talking to his disciples. I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this. Go with me to John chapter 20, last scripture of the night. John chapter 20. John chapter 20, verse 19. This is right after Jesus resurrected from the dead. His disciples are scared out of their mind, and Jesus literally walks through the walls. That's probably not the best thing to do. But you're Jesus, so you can do it. Amen. 
Verse 19, that Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace be with you. Now, key in here. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Verse 22. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. One more scripture that just came to my mind. Acts chapter 1. Just go with me real quick. I bounce really fast if you can't tell. Acts chapter 1. Just go with me real quick to verse number 7. This is right before Jesus leaves the earth. So this is, these are the final words of Jesus. He replied, the Father alone has the authority to set, these, set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people everywhere about me. In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Just stand with me for a quick sec, will you? If I could get my keys, that'd be awesome. When the keys come, the glory comes. Come on, somebody. When I read the Great Commission, some of the final words of Jesus, you know what I hear? What I hear in my mind is Jesus saying to his bride, to his disciples, to his church, you and I, this is the blueprint to flipping the world upside down. This is how you live a life of purpose, of hope, and of destiny. And if Jesus, the Son of God, came to this earth, he could have done whatever he wanted to do to flip the world upside down. You know what the first thing was that he did? He made disciples. Before he preached, before he laid hands on the sick, he said, hey, come be my disciple. Friend, you, if you can't tell, I love preaching. <laughs> I love healing the sick. I love casting out devils. I love baptizing people. I do it full time with my life. But if I don't make disciples, I'm not obeying God. This is a challenge for myself. I travel a ton. I get tired. Sometimes I'm like, God, help me. I literally was in Oregon the last five days. I was supposed to be there for 36 hours. But the presence of God broke out, and we pushed my flight back three days. Amen. But I challenge myself and I go, God, if I can preach on a stage but I can't spend 20 minutes with somebody, please, Lord, take the mic away from me. If I can only get hyped up when I'm in the building but I can't spend time around the dinner table, God, there's something wrong. If I can get fired up on Instagram but I can't get fired up to share my faith with somebody, there's something wrong. If I can preach with boldness out of the word of God, but I don't live the word of God, there's something wrong. You see, here's the deal. When I stand before God and when you stand before God, I'm, I'm so convinced he's going to be less concerned about what I did on a stage and more concerned about how I treated people in my life. He's probably not going to ask me, hey, Ross, remember when you spoke at that stadium? <laughs> He's probably going to say, hey, son, how did you love your wife one day? Hey, how did you love your, your future children, Ross? How did you love your pastor? Did you serve your local church? How did you talk to that person at the gym that was rude to you every day? Did you get rude back to them? He's probably going to be less concerned about the numbers and the fame and the name and more concerned with the posture of my heart towards him and towards people. Here's what I want to do tonight. If, if, you guys, if you guys can't tell, I know you guys are fiery. I love it. But I like to do something when we do an altar call. I like every eye opened. Because Jesus hung on a cross with every eye able to see him. And I want to give an altar call tonight. Now, here's the thing about an altar call, okay? You guys are probably used to them. If you're new here tonight, I'm so glad you're here tonight. Keep coming. This is an amazing church. Love this church. Amazing people.
But you see, up here, this is not just some uh, carpet and a stage and some speakers. No, no, no. This is an altar to the living God. And an altar is a place where God meets man. You see, not only have I had the privilege of traveling California, I've been in the streets of New York City, Miami, Florida, Hollywood Boulevard, North Carolina, Dallas, Texas, everywhere you can imagine. Every person that responds to the call encounters God up here. And so if you're in this room tonight, in number one, you are not right with God. Let me explain what that means. Saying a prayer does not mean you're saved. Making Jesus your Lord is how you are saved. It is confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart that Jesus is Lord and rose from the dead and you will be saved. Let me say it like this, since I'm already all the way in. <laughs> you know, in our culture, we're taught that it's normal to rebel against God. No, no, no. It's normal to rebel against the devil. It's normal to rebel against death and darkness. It's normal to rebel against anxiety, depression, suicide, loneliness, fear, trauma, all that stuff. How about you rebel against that tonight? How about you take a stand for your life and say, God, I may not understand it all, I might not have it all figured out, but nothing else is working. Friend, you were designed for relationship with God through Jesus Christ. So my first call tonight in a sec is for those who have never surrendered their life to Jesus. But number two, maybe you've been coming here for a while, church for a while, amen, glad you're here. But friend, Jesus said, that if anybody wants to be my follower, they must take up their cross, deny themselves, and not believe in me, follow me. We have a lot of believers, but a lot of followers. Tonight, if you've been a believer in Jesus, you've walked away from him, but you say, you know what, Jesus, I wanna come back home tonight, I will beg you, because I have no shame. Your soul matters to God, and you might be like me, you grew up in the most hopeless, godless, darkest situation. Friend, God wants to turn it around in a moment tonight. So I'm going to count to three. And when I count to three, this is incredible. We have an amazing team up here that wants to pray with you. One. Proud of you, bro. I silence every voice other than the Holy Spirit right now. And I say every spirit that isn't of God, be silenced now. Come on. Praise God. You know what, just come up right now. Just get up here quick, come on, get up here quick. If you wanna give your life to Jesus, if you wanna surrender to him afresh, if you wanna get free in your life, just come up real quick. Slide out of your seat and come up, come on. Praise God, praise God. Come on church, celebrate, celebrate. Come on, come on. Thank you God, thank you God. Thank you God. Come on, come on, I'm gonna wait 20 seconds. Just come up quick, just come up quick. Proud of y'all, proud of y'all, this is awesome. Proud of you, man. Proud of you, bro. Proud of you guys. Come on. There's five more people. Listen, if you feel your heart beating out of your chest, it's not because I'm a good preacher. It's the presence of the living God drawing you home tonight. Saying, son, daughter, will you come home? Will you turn your back on the devil and say, God, I'm all yours. This is your moment tonight. I want to wait a little bit longer. We're going to pray in a sec. Listen, the Lord likes to give me names, so I recommend coming up. Is there anybody else tonight? You're not too late. Come on, proud of you. Come on, this is amazing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So awesome. Okay, check it out. If you just walked up here, would you take a look at me for a quick sec? I'm not trying to be weird. I just like to see you because you're making the best decision of your life. Y'all hear that? You're making the best decision of your entire life. And from here on out, nothing will ever be the same. This is not me up here. I'm a person just like you, but now you're gonna receive the same Holy Spirit that I have. And from now on, no depression or darkness will overtake your life. Y'all ready? So here's what we're gonna do. 
The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you will be saved. Church, would you join me while we do this? So if you came forward, I don't, you don't need to yell it. If you want to yell it, go ahead. But I want you to say this with me. Just say, Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Say it like it's personal. Say it like you mean it. Say, Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. You shed your blood and broke your body for me. I repent and I turn from all my sin. Say these last few things. Say, from this day forward, I make you my Lord and I receive you into my heart. Say this last thing. Say, Holy Spirit, fill me now. Holy Spirit, fill me with power ministry team would you just pray for them just lay hands on them church would you extend your arms come on how would you pray if this was your mom your brother your cousin your aunt you'd be a little bit louder than that come on pray for our family right now jesus we just declare over every person up here that the spirit of darkness would go be gone be gone every addiction we break your power now by the anointing of god every yoke of the enemy broken now depression go Anxiety, go. Suicide, go. Fear, go. Drug, alcohol addiction, you lose your grip right now. We sever every tie of the devil over your mind, over your heart, and over your body in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, keep praying. 20 more seconds. God's touching people right now. I can literally see people encountering God right now. Come on, keep praying, keep praying. If you have a prayer language, just pray in the spirit. Yes, Jesus, we thank you. We ask God for the fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire right now. Would you consume every person from the top of their head to the soles of their feet in Jesus' name now? If you need freedom from any addiction, you got to come up right now. God is going to set you free. Get up here quick. Any addiction in your life, just come up real fast, quick, right now, like seriously. God is going to deliver you right now. Where are you at? Just come up. Just come up. I want to share this story. I want to share this story real quick. Two days ago, I was in Oregon. This lady had a cigarette addiction. And I said, the Lord's going to deliver you. She came forward. She got set free. She went to her car to throw away her cigarettes. And her cigarettes were no longer in her car. God is going to set you free right now from any addiction that has had you for decades, for years, for months, or for weeks. If you're coming forward for that, lift your hand so I can see you. Lift your hand. I'm going to pray for you. Anybody else? Amen. Anybody else? If you see somebody with their hand lifted, just put their hand on your shoulder. Put your hand on their shoulder. Father, we declare right now in Jesus' name, addiction be gone. Be gone right now. By the anointing of God, it goes through you right now from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Those thoughts are getting out of your mind right now. New desires, new emotions, new body right now in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I declare all the years that the enemy has stolen from her, we break it off right now in Jesus' mighty name. Keep praying, keep praying. People are getting free right now. Bro, let me pray for you. Just get up here. Just come on. Let me pray right here.
want to pray for one final thing tonight. If you've been burning for revival in your life and you're saying, God, now is the time for revival. I just want you to come forward. I just want to release an impartation over you for boldness to proclaim the gospel. So just come up real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. Just slide out of your seat. Lift your hand so I can see you. Lift your hand so I can see you if you just want that fire of God. Keep it raised up. Keep your hand high. Keep your hand high. Listen, listen real close. The Bible says it's not by might, it's not by strength, but by the Spirit of God. So we're not going to hype this moment. I want you right now just to begin to cry out for the fire of God. Just cry out. Just say, God, give me more right now. God, I want the fire. I want revival. I want to preach the gospel. I want the fear of man to be broken off my life. I want to see my family saved. I want to see my city saved. Come on, just cry out right now. 10 seconds. Go, go, go. Come on, if you can't lift your voice now, you won't lift your voice outside the building. Father, we declare in the anointing of the Holy Ghost for fire to come right now. Touch every person from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. I declare the spirit of revival to come right now. Spirit of revival, come right now in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, keep praying. Amen. We're going to keep, we're going to stay in this presence. The team is going to worship, but this is going to continue Saturday, 4 o'clock. We're going to be downtown San Bernardino on Court Street Square. Invite people that you want to see be saved that day. Like he said, could it be just that one person to be saved for the whole city to turn around? It could be who you invite. Let's show up Saturday at 4 o'clock. This is going to continue there. We're going to see souls get saved, and we're going to see San Bernardino will never be the same again after this Saturday. How many believe that? How many were blessed by Ross tonight? Let's give him a hand if you were blessed by that message. Thank you, Ross. We love you, church. God bless you. Thank you so much. Remember, if God is for you, there's no one who can come against you. If you need prayer, you can stay up here.